guys are there. Cheers for now. Hi there, you are listening to the Guitar Speak podcast. My name is Matt Wakeling and this is the show I produce in Sydney, Australia, where I speak to leading guitarists and guitar figures from all around the world. Thank you so much for joining me for episode number 120. Now today we welcome back to the show legendary frontman and guitarist Michael Sweet of the band Striper. Now we last spoke to Michael in episode number 85, just ahead of Striper's 2018 tour of Australia, which ended up being quite a historic tour. You'll have to listen on to find out why. We talk about Michael's latest solo album, Title 10, and discuss his upcoming acoustic tour of Australia. It's a great conversation, so let's jump straight in. Hello. Hello, Michael. It's Matt Wakeling from the Guitar Speak podcast in Sydney. How are you? Nice to, talk, nice to talk to you. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to talk to me. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for your time. In fact, we spoke last year, Michael, just before you guys, before Striper came uh, to Sydney, which was, which was really cool. So it's nice to have you back. Well, it's nice to, nice to be coming back, and uh, I'm very grateful and humbled. Uh, I'm coming back as a solo artist, acoustic, and uh, it's a little nerve-wracking, but in a good way. <laughs> how, how so? Well, you know when you come when you come with a band and as a band, you know you you've got more of that team mentality. You know, mm-hmm. um, there's a little bit more to fall back on or to rely upon or to I don't want to use the term hide behind, but you know if you if your voice cracks or you make a mistake, you got a little bit more to hide behind. When it's just you and a guitar, acoustic guitar, you got nothing to hide behind. So, <laughs> you know, in that regard, in that sense, it's a little nerve wracking. But at the same time, it's it's a, it's as enjoyable, maybe even sometimes in some regards, a little more enjoyable because it's a much more personable uh, evening, much more intimate evening, and I really enjoy it. Excellent, excellent. I've heard like you you disperse the music with stories and of your own history and uh, and Striper's history. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing really planned. I mean, I have a set list, but I'll come out and I'll play a song, and and then I might talk for five minutes, you know, and and, and tell people stories about the old days or how we came to be or whatever. And then I'll play a song, and, and I might stop within the middle of a song and start talking. I mean, it, it's just really, it's what I'm feeling in the moment. That must be fun. That must be quite freeing to uh, put together a, a night like that. That sounds cool. It's very freeing, and, you know, there's no structure to it. With the Striper set, it's very structured. You know, we go out and we follow the set, and we have a, a, a certain way of getting through the set and whatnot. There's not a lot of... Uh, time spent with with the audience uh when i do an acoustic show it's it's very uh you know very personable and and i spend time with the people there and it it, it kind of almost feels like you know i'm inviting all these people into my home into my living room and we're just sitting and hanging out and breaking bread together and 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 getting to know each other and it's, it's very cool i love it awesome i love that now you've just released your 10th solo album which i'd love to talk about plus there's a a a huge catalog of striper repertoire to draw on how do you um how do you decide what to bring into your solo set well you know i i I have to always give it quite a bit of thought and and you know come from the the view of it's got to be able to translate acoustically you know some songs like yahweh or um God or some of these big epic songs might not work acoustically. You know, they may if we sat and figured out a way to make them work, but typically speaking, usually they won't work. Yeah, sure. Songs like Calling on You and Lady and Honestly and Always There for You and you know, there it, it's just a given that those will work beautifully acoustically. So I, I have to come at it from that angle and, and try to figure out what's going to work acoustically. Um, and I'm also trying to figure out a way to fit not only Striper songs into the set, but acoustic songs into the set, Sweet and Lynch songs into the set, 
Boston songs into the set. Yeah, of course. You That's know, nice. and, and trying to make it all work together. Nice. That's a nice problem to have, I think, being able to draw on so much. <laughs> <laughs> so much it experience. Is. What, um, what guitar are you playing for this tour? Well, I'm bringing with me, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm bringing uh, a, uh, a prototype uh, Washburn Michael Sweet model acoustic. And it's really, really amazing. It, it's a black quilted maple uh, cutaway acoustic guitar uh, with an LR bag system. Uh, and it sounds amazing. It looks amazing. And I'm so excited. They're actually going to be uh, releasing this guitar at uh, Winter NAM in California in January, and it'll be available to all the uh, retailers out there worldwide. That's awesome. It seems like the last 18 months or so, there's been a lot of stuff released, um, mostly through Washburn, but also I think last time we spoke, we talked about um, the the ISP, the Theta, but there seems to be more guitars since we spoke. So I'm talking about May 2018. Um, we were talking before your, your world tour. So, yeah, what's happened since then? Well, I tell you, it, it's amazing. I mean, the thing about Washburn, they've been a company that's really embraced who I am, and they have a vision for what I want to do as an artist. And uh, it, it's it's incredibly inspiring. Uh, and I, I love them as people. Uh, I deal with Gil and Nick and Derek, and they're all amazing people. And they really treat me well. And again, they have a vision for what I'm doing. And it's a, it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. With a lot of companies, it's a one-way street. I've worked with companies where, you know, it's their way or the highway. With with Washburn, they really want to involve uh, my opinions and, you know, uh, my ideas and whatnot in the guitar making uh you know, and what they're doing for me as in terms of guitars. And then they just recently came to me and they said, not only do we want to just release your guitars that you play live, but we want, we want to offer some other models. So they're releasing and unveiling at Winter Nam a new acoustic. They're unveiling a new uh, Classic V, um, which is really cool. And they're also unveiling, they're bringing back a, a model they had called an HM. Uh, it was used in the Robert Palmer video. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you remember that. Um, all the girls playing a white Washburn guitar. Well, that model is going to be a Michael Sweet model with my triangles on it, like my Kelly. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And, yeah, it's really cool. And then they're also bringing back another model they released in the 80s called an RR, which was very similar to a Jackson Rhodes. And I actually owned one. I bought one on my own and played it live, and they're bringing that back with the yellow and black stripes. So it's really cool, man, to see them get behind me like this and be releasing all these Michael Sweet, a Michael Sweet line of guitars, basically. Wow, that's fantastic, man. So good. Congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. The Grover Jackson and Washburn connection is interesting, too, because he moved over to Washburn um, for a brief time after he sold Jackson. Um, which you had a great history with as well. And interesting that now you're playing uh, at that, if I remember correctly, that RR was one of Grover's designs that he brought over. It was. It absolutely was. And not only the RR, but uh, there was a model that uh, Ace Freely played, a few models that Ace Freely made that had a little bit of that Jackson thing, you know, that very uh, interesting shape uh, in design. And, you know, it, it, it always boggles my mind. You know, people... Some people, not all, but some people are so quick to write off Washburn. And I actually read comments on Facebook where some guys, guitar players, will say, man, you should go back to Jackson. And I got to say, I would never go back to Jackson. And that's not to disrespect Jackson at all, because obviously Jackson's a very established company and sure. yeah. a lot of guys play Jackson guitars. But I tell you, until you play an American Michael Sweet model Washburn, Man, you don't know what you're missing <laughs> because they're they're every bit as good, actually even better than the American Jacksons that I've played in recent years. So I love the guitars that Washburn is building. They're they're quality beyond what I ever dreamed of. 
You mentioned uh, the idea of being solo, being you know without bandmates to fall back on. Um, on your on the last Australian tour, that was a really unique situation in that Oz Fox had fallen ill. Um, thankfully, he's he's recovered now. But you ended up coming down as a three piece, so you were fronting the band, singing all the leads, and doing all the guitar parts. Tell me what that was like. At short notice, I might add. Well, I mean, it was nerve wracking. Certainly, um, it was. It added a little bit more stress to uh, not only myself but to Perry and to Robert because we had to improvise, you know, and, and and do things outside of the box and uh, not like the normal as planned way of doing things. Sure. Um, but you know, the interesting thing is, some people may not know, is we used to be a trio, you know, back a pre-striper, we were a band called Rock's Regime. And before Oz joined, yeah, before Oz joined the band, we were a trio. Okay. And Eric Johnson was, Eric Johnson was a bass player. I was a guitar player, singer, and Robert was a drummer. And we did that for a number of years. And um, so it, 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 I don't want to say that it came easy to me, but it, it, it certainly uh, reminded me of the past. To, to go and play as a trio. I mean, were we missing something? Of course. I mean, Oz and I and Striper is known for the guitar harmonies and the the uh, vocal harmonies. So we, we didn't have Oz. We were missing a vocal harmony or we were missing a guitar harmony. And, and, and that's a lot to be missing. So it wasn't the same at all. But that being said, the the crowds, the people came and supported us and, and and came to the shows and we had such a good time and it was very unique to experience Striper as a trio. It was certainly a, a, a once in a lifetime thing. I don't know if it'll ever happen again. Michael, you've just released your tenth album called Ten. That's <laughs> that must have been a simple choice for the. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it, I, I knew I wanted to call it Ten before I started writing any song you know, because it was my 10th album. And then I also wanted to write a song about the Ten Commandments. I always have for quite a number of years. So I, I had the opportunity to, to do that uh, with the title track. Uh, so for those two reasons, it just seems perfect to name it 10. Fantastic. Now, this kind of follows along the footsteps of One Sided War in that you're really mining, you know, old school metal, the, the, the music which you've said numerous times you love. Um, that seems to be your happy place uh, in amongst all the stylistic opportunities you've had as a solo artist. That seems to be where you find your your groove. Is that a fair statement? I would say that's a fair statement. Yeah, I mean, I, I always come back whether I experiment or uh, you know um, try different things musically speaking, which I've done over the years. You know, I've done acoustic laden albums, I've done commercial rock albums, popular albums, ballads all sorts of things. I always eventually come back full circle to metal and hard rock because those are my roots. You know, I grew up on UFO, Scorpions, um, Deep Purple, Van Halen, Judas Priest, Dio, Iron Maiden. Um, all these bands were the bands that I listened to as, as a teenager uh, into my 20, 21, 22, early 20s. And, and I, I just listened to that stuff day in and day out. And it had such an influence on my style as a musician and as a writer and as a performer. So I eventually come back to that, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and uh, Striper did. You know, we tried different things with Reborn and Murder by Pride, and then we, we, we came back full circle with No More Hell to Pay. Yeah. Same thing with my solo albums. One side of war, I, I feel that I came back full circle uh, to my, my metal roots with One Sided War. Now, on that album, you had a, a handful of fantastic guests like uh, Joel Hoekstra and Ethan Brosh. It seems like the guest list has um, doubled for the new record. <laughs> yeah, maybe even quadrupled. I mean, <laughs> I, I decided to take it a step further on 10 and instead of just having a few guitar players handle most of the solos, I decided to have a different guitar player on every song. 
uh, and, and it really worked out. And I love the fact that each guitar player brings something to the table and takes each that particular song to a new level and, and adds his own signature to the song. And it's really cool. I love that. Excellent. Yeah, yeah it's really interesting hearing your voice with um, some different guitar textures. Um, uh, I think Rich Ward uh, from Fozzy, he, he gets the wah out. I, don't, I can't remember the last time I heard a wah on one of your records or a striker oh, record. Oh, yeah. I, 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 and, and I feel probably one of the most underrated guitar players. Uh, if I had to pick the most underrated on the album, I would go with Rich Ward and I would go with Ma uh, Marzi Montazari on Lay It Down. Those two guys are the most underrated. They're just as solid and just as good as any other player on the album, but you don't hear a lot about them, you know, and, and um, they're so good, so incredibly talented. And, and these are guys that I love as, as human beings and I love as players. Very fun. Must be fun um, asking your friends and, and, uh, and colleagues to, to jump in on a song. I love it. Ethan Brosh sounds amazing. Yeah, Ethan... Ethan is such an unorthodox player. You know, he's got, I hear little bits of uh, George Lynch in his playing, little bits of Steve Vai, little mm -hmm. bits of Eddie Van Halen. Uh, you know, a, a lot of different, uh, it, it, he's quite an eclectic mix of styles, but I love that about him. Because when he plays a solo, it's unlike anything you've ever heard. But that's what I love. Um you know, but at the same time, I like the more straight ahead kind of uh, approach as well. You know, with guys like, uh, you know, Tracy Guns who played on Ricochet. Yeah. You know, it's a real awesome bluesy, stuff. more straight ahead yeah. kind of thing, but I love it. Yeah. There's still plenty of Michael Sweet guitar sounds that I recognize straight away. Um, a quick question. Uh, better Part of Me, the first track. is. Are you playing, I know Jeff Loomis is on that, but do you play the opening solo at the start of the song? I don't play the opening solo. I play the rhythm. Okay, okay. So I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all me. Yeah, yeah. But Jeff is doing all the guitar soloing. Okay, okay. Because even the soloing, the first one, I thought, oh, that could be Michael. I mean, definitely the rhythm, that well, that mid rangey song. So, yeah, interesting. Well, I tell you, Jeff, Jeff has such an amazing way of, you know, shredding, but making it very musical. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there are guys that shred that, you know, just are uh, tons of notes, but not so musical. Jeff is a shredder, but he's very musical. And uh, yeah, he brought so much to the table in that regard. Now, could I have played the solos on all these songs? Yes, I could have. Uh, the only solo that I'm doing on this entire album is the solo for Let It Be Love, okay. the ballad. Okay, yep. And... You know, you can hear that, that that that's more of a Michael Sweet signature, and, and, and it almost takes on a little bit more of a striper-esque kind of sound. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, and that's why why I really wanted to go in a direction of having a different player on every song, because I wanted to try to stay away. I really do try, believe it or not, to make sure that my solo albums uh, differ from the striper albums. You know, I've had people say, oh, man, I just had some guy post a message uh, yesterday. He said, man, I wish you had played all the solos on the album. I could certainly do that. But, you know, I just didn't want to take one side of war and even more so 10 in that direction. I wanted to try to give them their own sound and, and take them away from the striper thing uh, a little more so. So that's why I brought in all these different players. Seems like a, a super fruitful time for you in general. The, the last Striper album, Goddamn Evil, was fantastic. You were touring everywhere, new solo album now. And, of course, the acoustic tour in Australia starting next week, I should, I should mention. Yeah, we, we fly out on Saturday. We get in on Monday. And I think the first show is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is it, is it uh, Thursday night, I believe? Yeah, Factory Theatre in Sydney, yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's right around the corner, and um, I'm excited, you know, just to come and, and, and travel so far to be able to have the opportunity to, to perform uh, acoustic solo in Australia is, is a first for me, and very humbling. Uh, it's such an honor, uh, because, you know, I love Australia. 
And if people don't know that, I want them to know that now. And it's not just Michael Sweet putting on the charm uh, for an interview. But, uh, you know, Australia, I said this in um, a few interviews prior to this, um, Australia is, is like a second home. You know, even though we don't come often enough, whenever we do come, it feels like we're coming home. And there's such a, we just feel so comfortable there and so at ease. And it's the people, it's the environment, it's the, it's the, it's just everything about Australia. It feels, it feels like home. So to have the opportunity to come as a solo artist with an acoustic guitar and perform is, is very unique and very special for me. Well, yeah, we've been coming here since 87, I think was the first the first tour so i think uh i think your your connection here is well known i wish you guys weren't so i wish you weren't so far away man <laughs> and we could come every year <laughs> well, we, we're, we're close i think <laughs> i think you're far away <laughs> yeah we're far away <laughs> either way either way it's, but i mean i wish we were closer i wish we were closer so we could come every year but it, it's it seems to be difficult to to uh, arrange uh you know a trip to Australia, uh, even every other year or even every five years, it, it it seems to be more and more difficult. But we work on it, and I'm just all the more reason why it's so special for me to be coming uh, as an acoustic solo artist. Yeah, very cool. Well, listen, it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you again for, for coming back on the show. And, uh, yeah, definitely all the best for, for these, this run of shows coming up. Hey, my friend, thank you for your time. God bless you. I look forward to it. Can't wait to see everybody. And, uh it's going to be awesome. Great. Thanks so much, Michael. Really appreciate it. Okay, buddy. Take care. Okay, Bye-bye. See you, mate. Bye-bye. All right. There you go. My conversation with Michael Sweet. It was very cool to have him back on the show. If you haven't checked out episode 85, I will leave a link in the show notes. And that was a cool conversation too. So between these two talks, we've covered a lot of stuff. Now, before we go, let's play a quick game of Guitar Speak Podcast. Join the dots. Now, today we spoke about Ethan Brosh being a guest on Michael Sweet's album. Of course, in last week's episode, we spoke to Nilly Brosh, who is Ethan's sister. And I just want to say thank you so much for all the great feedback on episode 119 with Nilly and Jennifer Batten and Gretchen Men. It was a lot of fun, and I really appreciate the kind words and all the social media shares. And uh, thank you for sharing these episodes. I can't get the word out without you guys. So my uh, heartfelt thanks. All right, time for me to go. Thanks for tuning into the Guitar Speak podcast. I'll catch you next time. Bye now.